1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 5 is 25. And 13 times 13, well, of course, that's equal to 169. In this video, we want to see how to create a multiplication table for your little sister using dynamic arrays and conditional formatting. Now, if you have Microsoft 365 Excel, we're going to see how amazingly easy this is. But first, let me give you a high-speed glimpse of how we used to have to do this. Whoa, and the most amazing thing about that is that we used to think that was easy. But with Microsoft 365 Excel, we're going to define a new level of easy. Now, when in the world would you use something like this? Well, I taught my kid how to use mixed cell references when he was learning his multiplication tables. But in business, there's all sorts of tables where you have a variable at the top of the column and the front of the row. It might be a budget with 12 months and lots of expenses, or a future value finance calculation where you have interest rate and years. So let's see how to do this. For the row header variables, it's as simple as the dynamic spilled array function sequence. For rows, I'm simply going to put, I want five rows. The defaults allow us to start at 1 and go to 5. When I hit Enter, it automatically spills. And of course, if I change this to 10, it automatically spills without having to go through all those if function formulas like we did in earlier versions. And of course, sequence, we just skip over this argument, comma, and I put a 10 to spill 1 to 10 across the columns. Now, the real hard part of this formula was always doing mixed cell references. But we no longer have to do that. We simply highlight the entire spilled array. The cell reference is referring to C5 because that's where the formula lives. The spilled range operator says get everything that spills from that cell. Times left arrow, and I'll just type the pound. And that's it. When I hit Enter, now I can come up here and say 13, and instantly I have my table. Now the fun part of this is going to be the conditional formatting. So I'm going to highlight, because I want row header, and using Control, I want to select ranges not next to each other. These are the column header variables. And now we have both ranges highlighted. Now we can go to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. I want to use a formula to determine which cells to format and format values where this formula is true. Now I'm going to type this out here, and it's sometimes tricky in these dialog boxes. Equals, and I'm simply going to say is number. That's creating a logical formula that's going to ask, is the thing in the cell a number? Now very carefully, I want to click on the active cell, not one out here or one out here. Because when we highlight this range, that formula is going to be copied in memory behind the scenes into that cell and then copied over and down. So I select that cell, and I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. I have a relative cell reference. Close parentheses. And you can format it how you'd like. Maybe that fill blue, border outline, font white. Click OK, click OK. And of course, if I change this now, Control-Z. Now, actually, I made a mistake there. I only highlighted down to 13, and I really wanted down to 20 as a possibility. So watch this. I'm going to right click, and there's the Format Painter. I'm going to double click it, because I very carefully want to apply it in two places. Click and drag down to 27. Click and drag over to V. All right, now I see my paintbrush is still enacted, so I'm going to click the Escape key. And if I test it all the way to 20, that's looking good. 
Now internally here, I highlight, and there's the active cell. Alt H L N, page down, tab. Equals is number. There's the active cell. We'll make it a relative cell reference. Close parentheses. Format. Fill something like green. Border. Click OK. Click OK. Now the final touch is I'd like all of the squares of whatever the column header is to be highlighted in yellow. So we'll highlight all the cells. There's the active cell at the top. Alt H L N, page down tab. Now I want to ask the question, hey, active cell as a relative cell reference, so I'll hit the F4 key. Are you equal to, and guess what? I'm going to click on the column header. And the thing is, although spill dynamic array formulas make mixed cell references in formulas in the worksheet, much rarer now. In this case, I really need to have for conditional formatting, locked as I go down, but free to move as it copies to the side. So I'll hit the F4 key and lock only the row reference. And then exponent, there's the caret, Shift 6, 2. And we'll do format something like yellow. Click OK, click OK. And there we go. Now we can test this. Five. And look at that. Our rule is correct, but we need to add a condition in an AND logical test. Please look and see if it's not empty. So I highlight. And to edit a rule, we can go to Conditional Formatting, Manage, or we can use the keyboard, Alt-O-D. We can click Select and Edit, or Alt-E. AND is a logical function that does an AND logical test. That has to be true, comma. And the column header, F4 to lock only the row reference, is not less than, greater than, double quote, double quote. That's the syntax for nothing. Close parentheses. Click OK. Click OK. And now everything should be working. There's the multiplication table for our little sister with the amazing easy sequence and a simple reference to both spilled arrays. The hardest part, of course, was the conditional formatting. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn more about dynamic array formulas or conditional formatting, check out these videos. Mm -hmm.